beautiful pasta carbonara topped with a lot of cheese. Okay, so two questions, two, came up in the comment section is when do you cheese and when do you salt? So let's answer those. So if you've been following along in this quick video series, basically what I did was I boiled the water, right, to boil the pasta. I boiled the water. I added the salt once the water was boiling. Then I added the pasta, right? So there's salt on the noodles, give or take. The noodles are absorbing the salt that's in the pasta water. Okay, then in the pan, at the same time that the water's boiling for the noodles, in the pan, OXO Good Grips 10-inch non-stick skillet, by the way, there will be a link down below in the description. Make sure to check it out. By the way, now's a good time to hit that like button. Just saying. Okay, so in the pan, I was cooking off, rendering out the fat from some pork belly. It's not bacon. It's not guanciale. It's not uh, whatever other pork product is out there. It's just simple, uncured, unprocessed, untampered, unadulterated pork belly that I got from Costco. It's usually where I buy it. So diced up some pork belly, about a quarter of a pound. Put that in the pan. Just let it let it render out, right? Let the pork belly do its thing, crisp up and get nice and nice and nice. When the pasta was almost about, or when the noodles were about 99% of the way done, drained off the water, as you saw in the video, drained off most of the water. And then basically I poured the noodles and a little bit of residual pasta water into this. I didn't add any salt. So the, so to answer that that question of when do you salt, most of the salt is coming from the pasta water that I cooked the noodles in. And believe me, it's enough. Like one tablespoon for one pound of pasta is enough salt to flavor that water, which is then flavoring the noodles. Okay, the second question is, when do I cheese? When do I put the cheese in? So after I put the noodles in the pan with the pork belly, I cooked that until most of the water was evaporated. Basically, it either got absorbed by the pasta, whatever residual water was in there, or it evaporated out, you know, one or the other, maybe both. But when I felt like I had enough water evaporated, enough of that pasta water, I shut off the heat and then I added the eggs. There were three beaten eggs with some little bit of black pepper and a little bit of red pepper flake. Shut off the gas, right? And just kept stirring and stirring and stirring and mixing until the eggs had this nice, you know, silkiness to them. Homogeneously, is that even an adjective? Proverbial phrase. I don't know. Conjunction, junction. What's your function? <laughs> Help me out here. Anyways, when everything kind of melded together and I felt like it was at a perfect state of silky smoothness where everything just kind of was copacetic and in harmony with everything else, that's when I brought it to the table to serve it. So in the serving bowl is where I added the cheese. Like as you can see, there's cheese on top of here right now. So that's when I put the cheese on top of the dish and then let your guests mix it up and do whatever they want to do. I typically don't put cheese into the pan, the frying pan, because what I've noticed is that the cheese will start to separate, right? The cheese itself will turn into, you just get like a big oily mess is what you'll end up with. This way, at least, you keep the silkiness of the pasta, right? And the noodles, like this is now about 10 or 15 minutes now after I've cooked this and it's just coated in cheese. I mean, I like to put a lot of cheese, but if you were here, and you will be here if you go back in my video playlist and you'll see what this looked like when I first took it out of the pan. You'll kind of see how silky smooth it was. So just adding that little bit of cheese at the very, very end and let your guests put in the cheese. This was Grana Padana. You could use Reggiano. You could use Parmesan. You could use Romani. You could use whatever you want to use, whatever kind of cheese. But let your guests put their cheese in however they see fit. And I think that the dish will hold together better that way as opposed to putting in the cheese in the pan and then serving it that way. Cause how do you know, maybe somebody doesn't like cheese or maybe somebody wants more, somebody wants less cheese than what you gave them. This way, everybody's happy. They get to put their own cheese in all comes out delicious. Anyways, if you like what you're seeing, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button down there below, hit the description section for some pretty cool products. I hope that answers both of your questions to quickly recap the salt. Most of the salt like table salt or pink Himalayan salt or whatever that gets added to this dish or that's in this dish comes from the water that I used to boil the pasta. And then the second question, the cheese question was, I wait till the very last second upon serving to actually put the cheese in. 
And I feel like the dish comes together better that way. And, and your guests get to see the silkiness of the pasta. Because that's what pasta carbonara is. It's basically the silkiness of the egg mixed with that rendered pork belly fat that gives it that smooth, silky, nice texture. And then they can put cheese on and have a party in their mouth because that's how delicious and amazing this pasta was. Anyways, catch you all in the next exciting adventure.